welcome to the women's cave. Hello and you. welcome to the women's cave. I'm going to just say it again. Like, just in case y'all didn't know, because Winona's letting me have it, and I have to take advantage of that. Like, I have to be like, what? Take it advantage. It's time to talk now. Like, no, it's not. No, it's not, because I'm just going to be taking advantage. No, I'm Jay. No, this is too much advantage. And, Hi, and, I'm Winona. <laughs> I should say it twice, because she took up all that time before. I am Winona, the narcissist beautiful one. Well, not exactly beautiful, because we have a model in the house today. I so know, so... I'm we, cute at best. Right, and, and if y'all check out our earlier episode, where we did like an early episode, and it was like one o'clock in the morning. Oh, my it, goodness. We were talking yeah. to an Aussie, so that meant like... We were straight up, I was straight up asleep. I didn't get enough sleep today, so. She's being her non-sleep self. Not when she gets to, like, the hangry sleep self. Oh, my goodness, it is sleepless bad. self. But the uh, the mm -hmm. one where she's sleepless is like, it's party time! And she'll be sleeping, like, 20 minutes. Oh, I will. Let's like, make this quick. Right after this interview is done, we'll be like, <laughs> I mean, the ugly sleep, too, you know, like, with the drool. And she just admitted that. I love it. <laughs> with the drool. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, okay, so anyway, we know literary yeah. life guides with pop poetry. No one is going to accept us as a person who writes life guides now talking about drooling sleep. Okay, y'all, but if y'all don't get some drooling sleep, then y'all know how angry people get when they don't get that really good sleep. That's true. So That's true. I, I'm telling She's you. She's keeping it true. I'm She's keeping it 100. I'm keeping it 100. Anyway, we wrote literary life guides with pop poetry, which is a fancy way of saying we wrote some books, y'all. All right. So, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. Oh, my goodness. It's not audio book. They are audio books. So, check they it out. They are now audio books, yes. You know, my book saying? is on audio. Since you took the beginning, I'm going to be like, my foreign coffee book is also an audio book. Yeah, she just has to throw in things. Anyway, anyway, the top and the other one. <laughs> and, and I thought I did my journey alone. And if only I were me. And then top we'll, four of 17. Yes. yes, I'm just throwing in stuff. I'm having so much fun with it. And soon there will be another book coming out. It's called The Women's Cave. And we will, y'all will see all about that later. It should be coming out soonish. All right. And then we did the 25 hottest indie authors, artists, and advocate magazine. And... The And I Thought Literary Magazine, which will be coming out soon. And then we have, like, necklaces and jewelry and everything. Okay, so you can find out everything your ladies are doing. I mean, our crazy adventures and then, like, our this extra dull poet life adventures. Everything you want to know is on www.andwethought.com. But y'all aren't here to hear about us. No, no, we're kind of boring. Yes, because we don't live in Paris. No, you're here don't. to hear about our wonderful, ah, you're here to hear about our wonderful guests. This is why I like you have the women's yes. My mouth was like, mm -mm, I'm not doing it. You woke me So wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? I would. I am Velvet Damore, and I'm an American in Paris for 26 years now. And I'm probably best known for taking the runway here in Paris for John Galliano and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Um, and I was in a film that went to the Cannes and Tribeca Film Festival. And so that was really fun. And now my focus is very much on my own magazine, which is called Voluptu. And it kind of promotes genuine diversity. So especially within the plus size world, you often hear like, oh, we're promoting diversity. And they'll have like, you know, a couple of women of color or like Ashley Graham, you know, like somebody who's completely hourglass and it's not like genuinely like an apple shaped or, you know, somebody who's 600 pounds, then somebody who's like a hundred pounds. So it's, it's just a ton of actual genuine diversity. And I'm the principal photographer for that. So that's kind of my passion right now. You're the Ooh, principal photographer. Can you tell us what that what that means for like the people that don't know? <laughs> sure. I mean, it's it's like an online magazine, um, and so you know, it's really editorial. Like that's my love in life. Editorial photography is you know, if you get Vogue and you go to three quarters of the way in, you'll find a section that's all kind of like quite edgy and it's almost really about the story of the clothing. It's not commercial, just like a girl in a sweater. It's like a girl in a sequin gown in a garbage pile. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very kind of edgy and editorial. So I'm trying to bring that element to the plus size world and also just true diversity. You know, I'll have somebody who's maybe a burn survivor as my cover person, um, somebody who is, you know, in a wheelchair, somebody who's surviving cancer, plus just a plethora of beautiful plus size women. So it's, it's pretty diverse that way. So, and I am the person who shoots the most. So, I mean, I do most of the photography. First of all, I want to thank you so much for not putting you on the cover every month. I appreciate that. 
People said that you guys should do that. I'm like, no. <laughs> and, so, and then, um, you are, I guess you would be considered but a, a piece of the diversity action and fashion right now. So why, why did you feel that you needed to push the envelope a little bit more to show, was it to open eyes to be like, hey, you haven't gone far enough? Or was it to be like, hey, these are other options out there? Well, there's just, there's a ton of tokenism. Like, you know, even with mainstream fashion, they'll have like their one month where they're like, oh, it's, you know, women of color month. And that'll be the one month where they'll have women of color versus just integrating everybody the way it is in life. You know what I mean? Like not making it such a big deal, you know? Um, because it really isn't. I mean, there's so many people who, like we all wear clothing. We're not walking around naked, right? Fashion is for the people. So I feel like, you know, the trouble that we have now is the idealization of beauty is even further ex more extreme than it was in the past because of Photoshop and because of the plethora of images that we're kind of assaulted with on a daily basis. Before, I mean, y'all are younger than me, but you could walk down the street and a bus would go by you with no advertisement on it, you know? Now, every single thing you see has an ad on it. And that ad is saying more often than not that you don't fit in and that you're not included and that you don't like live up to this society's beauty standard. And so for me, it's about keeping a really strong sense of like glamor and not exploiting people's difference. Um, most people say, well, have said that my, my photography is like glamorizing normalcy. So it's taking the average person and just making them glam as can be. <laughs> and, and we just don't see that. Um, in the plus size community very often and even within you know mainstream fashion it's it's so tokenized when they want to say that they're doing any kind of diversity first of all they have to like applaud themselves about it which is what i'm doing to some extent but i'm just trying to kind of you know denote what the difference between my magazine is and a regular magazine and you know it's just like why is it one time a month that you know, or one article where you're going to put somebody who may be like differently abled or a transgender person or, you know, it's like, it should just be representative of people all around. And then within the plus community, it's always, you know, somebody who's really hourglass shaped. And the majority of us are not like, you know, holding no weights whatsoever in our stomach. Like most of us are just, you know, average quote unquote gals. And so there'll be, you know, people who are really, really very fat, which will never be in any magazine like myself, or there'll be people who maybe test now, test is, is bigger, obviously, or there'll be people who, you know, hold their weight in their stomach or, you know, I really try to kind of diversify in general. And I also don't use always model agency models, you know, I'll, I'll look on Instagram and maybe I'll see somebody I like and I'll shoot them. So I really try to, I, the thing we're missing the most within the plus size community, in my opinion, is opportunity, you know? And so if like Elle or Glamour or Vogue will like say, oh, we put like one picture of, you know, Ashley Graham in, what editorial, like their praise from here to can come for that. But the reality is we should be having that all the time. And so for me, it's really important to have just a huge amount of diversity and cater to people who are forgotten by fashion. Okay, Jay, so how are you doing this in the time of COVID? Because as you said, you shoot people and, then, and, and it has to be difficult. So what are the adjustments that you have made in, in this time of COVID? Crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I am like... <laughs> No, but I'm very much at risk to get, like, to die of COVID if I get it. So I take the whole lockdown very seriously. But I'm also very fortunate because I have shot so much material that now, like, initially when I came out, I worked through issue, and it was kind of like a page-turning online thing. And I didn't transfer all of those to my online site. So now I'm honestly taking older material and publishing it where people could see it who have not seen it before. I also shot a lot of video footage, so you'll see a lot of new videos on, on our IGTV, which is maybe older footage that I never could have time to put together. And I'm really concentrating on, on articles. We have an artatorial section, which features artists. So if you're an artist and you want your artwork featured, you can come at me. So that's a really fun place to look. I also started during COVID 
um, avant-garde fashion design. I like very weird fashion, like the crazy, like very Lady Gaga, whatever. <laughs> and so I wanted to be a place where that could be showcased. So it's not necessarily about plus sizes that, it's just really extreme fashion. My opinion on fashion is that the essence of it is not to follow, but to lead and to be super creative. And I feel like we've lost that, you know, mainly due to advertising where like the advertisers are paying a lot of money. So they want you to do things a certain way. So because I have no advertisers, <laughs> I'm able to just do whatever I want. And um, so I have, I have that section that I started. I have like a, an original playlist section that I started as well. So I'm kind of doing, you know, even though we're known really for the photography, um, I've been working on other things. And then I, I had um, a PR intern come and she created a little campaign that was very fun. It was called 50 Shades of Nude. And it was really about skin and the skin you're in. And so we have that on the website as well, where we invited people to send in their pictures and, and to speak about how they feel about either nudity or the image itself. So we do have nudity in the magazine. Not everyone's going to go look at the magazine. <laughs> but it's artistic nudity. And, um, and you know, here in, in Europe, where I am, like, it's not a big deal if you have, like, a translucent blouse on. It's nothing that's salacious like lingerie is probably far more sexualized than actual artistic nudity but we do have nudity so um that's why that worked that campaign for us and i am i cannot lie that i really really want to shoot <laughs> so badly i've never gone this long without shooting so i'm about to um post um just like a little model search on our instagram to see what's out there. Unfortunately, you have to be in Paris because I'm in Paris, but someday in life, I would love to learn how to shoot more virtually of quality and then I could shoot everywhere. But I do also go to America and I do have shoots in America. So always just keep your eye peeled to V-O-L-U-P and then the number two, Volup two. Is there food at these shoots? That's Is there what? Is there food? Is there food? No, there's food afterwards. I like to torture people to make them work their ass off and then afterwards we all go out to eat and it's beautiful okay oh okay. so can so we come can we come uh, not to the shoot i just want to no, eat food we want to eat after i just want to eat food <laughs> and i feel that you want good places to eat in paris right and so i've only eaten at three good places in paris and we've been right and i feel like i like i feel like i failed paris like it's not paris failed me i failed paris because <laughs> i i'm like i i don't know where the food is paris, so yeah. eat randomly we ate kfc in paris you know <laughs> Everybody eats KFC here. It's a crazy thing. The Americans love it. I, I've eaten KFC here too. I mean, I'm like very into the atmosphere. So I don't know if you went to the Georges Pompidou Center. There's a restaurant there called George, say George. And it's on top of the Pompidou Center. And it's magical because it's very crazy interior, almost like little cave-like area. And then it's all glass. So you see all of Paris and it is amazing. Um, and then there's, you know, I mean, in Montmartre, there's a ton of restaurants. There was one called The Kitchen. I mean, I honestly don't eat out a ton, to be perfectly honest. But everywhere you go in Paris, like if you go to a brasserie, they're just amazing, in my opinion. I, I, I mean, just get I've been here 26 years. So I get lost a lot was... in Paris, and I just like walk around, and then I'm just like, I'm starving, and if I don't eat, I'm gonna like. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm lost. Like, well, it's, it's funny when you out. first come here, you're so <laughs> obsessed usually by like croissant and baguette. Everyone's like, I've got to get a croissant, you know? And then the longer you're here, you're like, eh, a croissant, yeah. But okay, so by like, me, I'm obsessed. Obsessed. Okay, by she coffee. likes the coffee. And I like something in the business district. It was like, because we stay at the same hotel. So it's about three uh -huh. blocks away and you make a left. Mm -hmm. And there's a little place and you can get a whole dinner for 10 euros. It went up. Ooh, that's damn good. In the business district? Uh-huh. And well, Nona is one of the cheapest people you ever want to know. So she will find <laughs> the cheapest place. Like, I don't know how she does it. Like, she will walk and magically it will appear. So I think, like, she, like, puts it up in her writer's mind. Like, I will eat I need to be it. near her then. I have a friend <laughs> like, so it cheap. will be cheap. It will be cheap. And this is what I <laughs> and it just appears. It's like a I don't think she can be as cheap as this one friend I had in high school. This is how cheap she was. She would bring a tea bag with her to a restaurant and ask for hot water. Oh, all the oh, time. Oh. Lie to me. No. no. But then again, it's because she she cannot um I can't drink the tea. Drink all of 
the tea because I'm allergic look, to caffeine. Yeah, she's food oh, allergy. So she has so you herbal. bring herbal? We have herbal yeah. here. You can trust that we'll be herbal. Oh yes, that's what I love about York. As soon yes. as we land, because we go on a book tour every year except for this year in York. So oh, as soon as I, can, I can drink tea and eat a few foods that I can't eat in America. So I'm very. Oh. I can just say I'm. But in America, they don't. I mean, I haven't. I've not been here 26 years, so it has been ages. But when in America, they don't have decaffeinated tea. Because yeah, here it's like chamomile and whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay, but chamomile is for sweet. So if you're out with a friend <laughs> and you're like, yeah, woo, let's have fun. And then someone's like, okay, and you're like, do I look like I want to have Caffeine out? is to wake up. You can have some caffeine and then you'll be like, really wake up. I'm allergic to caffeine, so I can't even drink certain sodas. I can't drink most teas. So yeah. How did you even find that out? That is so wild. Oh, I was kind of born a to yeah. caffeine. And then we, we thought it was gone, right? And then one day she was like, I'm going to have this coffee. And we were like, and you're going to have this liquid Benadryl. Oh my goodness, why is your face <laughs> well? Like, what is happening right now? So, yeah. Well, what it, happens to you? Do you like pass out or do you like, just get super? Face starts to swell and it's, oh. and I mean, like, I'm the one with the big cheeks. That's right scary. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, anyway. whatever. That That's life. So, where can people find your wonderful magazine? Oh, I to ask you a question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have to ask a narcissist question, which is pretty you much how can I find the magazine? <laughs> well, when you guys come here, you should both come, and then I'll put you in the magazine. Okay. You didn't have to when answer. you come to Paris. You could have just told her, no, nah, no, nah, she didn't want no poets. <laughs> no, I could have put you both in the magazine. We can do a shoot of you. I mean, that's what it's all about, really, to me. I don't take everyone in the magazine, but what is inspiring to people who look at the magazine is that the whole point is I can take anybody, glamorize the heck out of them, and as a photographer, I've been shooting for ages, really turn them out to the point where you're somebody that's relatable, but you are glamorous as all get out. And that's what people need to see because now we don't have this relatable style where we honor the average woman, quote unquote average, because no one's really average, right? Exactly. So I would love to come here and I'll, I'll bring you some tea that is decaffeinated, no chamomile. <laughs> I start. I'm, I always start being <laughs> English first, so I'll. Oh man! I'll just be coming with a box of tea like this big because I love English, English tea. tea. English but... herbal tea. Okay. Yeah. So good. Oh my gosh! Amazing, it's, isn't it? It's so that, that, so that good. Care, but but here, there's some really cool ones too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. Okay. Oh, so no, with... I never finished what I was. I love bacon salad. By the way, that's what it was. It's like four four oh. leaves of lettuce with bacon on it. And then they're like, would you like Girl. a dressing? Sure. <laughs> sure. Because, you know, this Well, you know, there's a restaurant you have to go to. There's a restaurant and it's, it's in Montmartre. Like you get out at the Metro Abes and then you, you'll see like a post office and you go to the left. And I call it the salad potato restaurant. It is literally a gigantic vat, a bowl filled with not just like lettuce. There's some lettuce involved. Roasted potatoes and bacon. And it's a salad, and you're like, oh, I'm having my salad. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. That is yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's a must. Do. That's a, like, and goat go cheese on top of that. It's so good. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Things have just happened. When you come, <laughs> that's where we'll go to eat. We'll shoot in Montmartre, and then we'll go there afterwards. Yes. It'll be Absolutely. So cool. Absolutely. Okay. So where can people find out more about your magazine? Um, and reach out to you, especially since you said you're taking original art right now. So where can yeah. they and well, we have like um, I'm sorry, and watch the documentary that you were in. Yeah, yeah, all of those. Yes, yes, watch all of that. Well, um, I was in a film actually. It's called Avida, A V I D A. It's an old one, but it's very surreal and very crazy. People don't really <laughs> grasp it oftentimes. Um, but yeah, you can find the magazine at www up two, which is B O L U P, and then the number two. So volup2.com. And then you can also find me on Instagram with that and on Facebook. And yeah, artists can um, send B-O-L-U-P-T-W-O at yahoo.com. They want to email me some of their work samples to see if we'll feature that. So yeah. And then if I end up doing some virtual shoots, then I'll definitely get back at you guys and, and we can, you know, look for people who watch you guys Maybe we'll do a little like contest or something and they could win being in the magazine or something. 
Fabulous. We would love it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for taking this time out and coming on our show. We really appreciate it. I still can't believe you came. I know, right? I know, right? I'm I'm so honored. Are you kidding? I'm psyched for when you guys come to Paris. Seriously, let me know. It'll be super fun. So, oh, I'm so like, you don't, literally made the city of Paris so, fun to me. Now. So here it is. Don't. Yes, don't, that's don't, a challenge. We will show up. We will show up. Don't threaten. Please do. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's I'll go ahead and wrap us up. All right. So y'all, please go ahead and check out everything that our guest is doing today. It's really major it and is. wonderful. Please check it out. All right, Especially you can, her Instagram because it's fun. It is fun. So you go find Thank out. Thank you everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com while you're there you can check out all the fun fun cool things we have on our home page but more importantly than that please go to the ladies like tab go down to the middle of the page and support the charities that we support yes this is october so it is domestic violence month so powerful beginnings we like we want to give you a great shout out and yes we know that it's 2020 so as, as the old saying goes money is funny so we understand we understand if you can't donate to them it's all right maybe you can donate some time or some things that they're looking for and if you can't do that just add them on social media and or send them an email and say thank you for doing this wonderful work in the world because we all can use a little more encouragement I'm not well known yeah. but you know everybody else can why use are you it. trying to beat me out of everything i'm supposed to say today <laughs> 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 all right and so just remember y'all that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it so peace and love you guys from will lona and jade, the photo shoot and jade <laughs> my oh yeah thanks for listening